What is up Bruins fans? Today we're going to be recapping the 2024 NHL Draft. So we'll start here, of course, with the first round pick. Remember back to Monday where the Bruins did acquire the 25th overall pick back, their original pick that they traded back in the days to Detroit. Eventually Detroit traded to Ottawa and Ottawa got them, uh, traded back to Boston for Allmark. And that's 25th overall, which the Bruins picked. Dean Letourneau, 6'7", 214 pound forward from St. Andrews College. It's a high school uh, and, you know, 70 games played, 75 goals and 77 assists. Really speaks volume to the kind of player that he is. This kid has room to fill out as well. An absolute steal on the slot pick for really the value that Sweeney's getting out of this one. You know, he's a solid player. He has a lot of room to grow, especially in terms of his size. You know, filling out six foot seven, lots of room to go grow. You know, you're thinking of a player comparison, sort of similar to that of Tage Thompson from Buffalo. And he's a guy, you know, who once he can fill out, he's got the hands to play. He's a goal scorer naturally. Eventually, you know, he fills both his both, both games out. You're looking at him to sort of fill that middle six. Even you could argue for a top six center role for the Bruins at some point coming in the future years. So for the Bruins, you know, great pickup right off the top. We talked about it. I know a lot of people were unhappy with the trades uh, that in the Allmark deal, but we'll talk about another trade that I know a lot of people aren't all too happy about. But let's talk here first about sort of the pickup for uh, Letourneau. He's a guy, you know, he's going to be a good player for you in the future. Not Nothing, in my opinion, that's too worrisome there. And he's going to grow. And eventually he's going to fill his game out. You know, he's going to, to the schools in Boston next. So then it just becomes a factor of is he able to be, to sort of find his game and, and continue his, his solid style of hockey. Of course, time will tell there. But then there was a trade. And, you know, day one's done. Day two comes in. What kind of fireworks does Sweeney have under his belt? And sure enough, he's got himself a trade. This one is between the Boston Bruins and the Minnesota Wild, with the Bruins receiving the 110th overall pick in this year's draft and bidding with Terry in exchange for Jacob Lauco and a 2024 fourth round pick, which was the 122nd pick. So it was 110 for 122 and Letary for Lauco. More or less is what you're looking at here with Lauco. The little bit extra value. And so I know a lot of people aren't happy about this one, myself included. I'm a big fan of Lauco. I don't like to see him go. And I've been trying to rationalize it as best I can. And I'm having a little bit of trouble outside of the fact that the Bruins had somebody they wanted with Gronwald. Could they get him without this? Probably. I don't know. I'm sure they had some sort of interior sensor ticking off. But nonetheless, here, this is the trade they made. Lauco ships out for the Bruins. They bring in Letary. I don't see him playing in the NHL, to be completely honest with you. It seems a little bit like a contract ship out. You know, a team gets Loco, you get him for at least the rest of this year, and then he turns into an RFA. What's to come for him? Probably a little bit of an extension. I, You know, he's sort of that fourth line fringe player, but I do like the way he plays the game. He plays with speed. He has the skills to be able to play on that bottom six line. Then it just becomes a factor of you're not bringing anybody back, so are you just trying to clear some some contract room? You know, they picked up a guy like Kostelik. Is that who's going to take over? Lots of questions still to be answered for the Boston Bruins, and I think what comes next is going to be really interesting to see. I don't know what's to come, and I don't really want to try and guess what this trade was all about. It doesn't seem like it was cap room. It just seems like the Bruins wanted a guy and were willing to trade out another contract with Lauco to try and get there. I don't really like the deal, uh, but I can understand why they did it. They had a guy they wanted, and that's why they traded out Lauco. Uh, Let Terry won't play in the NHL, I don't believe at least, and the, and the two picks sort of just got exchanged. So you move 12 spots down, you lose Lauco, you bring in an NHL guy that will likely drop down to the AHL, send him through waivers if you have to. But I, once again, time will tell, see if he gets claimed and, and what else goes into that deal. But we'll move it along here to what that pick actually turned into with Elliot Grodewald, the defenseman, six foot two, 200 pound defenseman from Cedar Rapids Rough Riders in the USHL. And he's a guy who's much more of a physical threat. 57 games played, five goals, 11 assists, but 77 penalty minutes. And this is a guy that when you think about a, sort of that defensive, rough and tough defenseman, that's what you're looking for. And he has the ability to skate too. So he's not just one of those guys that you know can throw the body around and it sort of ends there. He's a guy that has and, and uses his tools to skate around and, and really provide that defensive on all ends. 
This is a guy I think in a couple years you might see him sort of in that bottom six, middle six range for the Bruins. I'd be curious to see if he can crack that that defensive core. But of course, once again, time will tell. You know, you get a left shot defenseman, the Bruins need a little bit of that. And, and Grodewall, in my opinion, really fills that void quite nicely. I think he's a guy, when we look in the future, probably is going to play that bottom six defensive pairing. Could be on that that fourth, that sort of second line defense the defensive role i don't think he's gonna be a high end like sort of that top top defenseman but i do think that he has the ability to sort of fill in where they need to especially with the bruins sort of lacking that more or less i think it's a great pickup for the bruins on this one then we move into round five and this was one that i was very happy to see 154th overall they picked jonathan morello the center from the saint michael's buzzers in the ontario junior hockey league Six foot three, 192 pounds in the season. He had 50 goal games played, 25 goals and 32 assists. But this is a kid who has the full package. When we look at it, you know, he has the ability to skate. He has the ability to shoot. He has the ability to play with some high hockey IQ. And he plays a full 200 foot game, which really you can't ask for much more than that. This is a huge pickup for the Boston Bruins, especially in the slot. I had him going uh, with that original 122nd overall pick. But the Bruins took him at 154, an absolute steal for them. Great pickup for the Bruins. And I think when we look at it in future years, this is a guy who you're sort of looking for that middle six center role. And I think he has the potential. You know, once you see a guy like uh, Patra go up uh, to that second line, I think you could see Morello filling in that void. I think he's a guy you should really keep an eye on as the years go on here as he slowly but surely develops into that NHL caliber center. I think he's got the tools in place. Now it's just a matter of time before he fills out the rest. But still, he's a guy, you know, he can put the puck in when he needs to. He's a good defensive center. He plays both sides of the ice very well, and he has the ability to play make. Really a full five-star package here, and you really can't ask for much more out of a fifth-round pick. This is a kid I you should really keep an eye out for uh, as we go along the years here. He's, he's a player that's flown under a lot of people's radar, but when he gets it going, he is going to be a dangerous threat in this league, and I, I'm really excited to see what he does. And then the sixth round pick, 186, Loke Johansson from Sweden, six foot three, 214 pounds with AIK, uh, AIK Junior, and then he transitioned to AIK with the All Fencing Hockey League. And this is a guy who's just an absolute defensive threat. When we think about him, you know, he's not necessarily your blow your socks off defenseman in terms of the offensive side. He's 33 games played, five goals, and eight assists with the junior team, and then one assist in 19 games played for that for the older team with the, with the All Svenskan League. But where he is really, really good is in his defensive ability, his ability to play on the defensive end. You know, he's a good skater. He plays physical. He's really what you're looking for out of defense. When we think about what the Bruins are lacking right now, a lot of that comes from, you know, their inability to play physical. You know, sort of their smaller stature and size and guys like Grizzlick, you know, who have a little bit of trouble playing that physical style. That's where a guy like Johansson comes in and think, you know, might not be in this year, might not be in the next couple of years. But at some point down the line, you might need that physical defenseman to really step it up. And that's where I think a guy like Johansson might come in. Sure, he's a six round pick. But with these kind of guys, you want to take a little bit of a flyer on him. You never know. You know, maybe he hits, he finds his groove out there. And then all of a sudden he comes to the AHL, finds his groove there. And sure enough, he's in the NHL in a couple of years. Especially as a sixth round pick, you're looking for guys with size. You're looking for guys that play the game the right way. And I think that's exactly what you're getting out of a guy like Johansson. But that will conclude today's video in terms of the draft. Be sure to drop your thoughts down below. But with that, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. If you like, drop a like. If you really like, if you're subscribing, tell all your friends and comment down below your thoughts on the NHL draft. Until next time, see you.